All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be making this intro animation. It's super simple. Let's get into it. All right, so first we're going to start out with an image with the transparent background. You can use your logo or really any image you want with this, but I like it to be, but make sure that it is a text or logo with a transparent background. So that would be exported as a PNG image. You can use Photoshop or whatever editing software you use. I use Photoshop in this case, just put in the type and then exported it as a PNG. So this is the image that we're going to be using in the animation. All right, so first thing we're going to do is switch over here to the EV render engine, and we're going to be using that. Now let's hit Shift A, add our plane, and hit S8, scale that up, and now let's quickly subdivide this. Subdivide it by 50, keep it right there. And just before we start doing all the nodes, let's add a simple displace and a cloud texture to our displacement. So we'll bring our depth all the way down and our size right about there. And then we'll give it a strength of 0.2. And now we have just some simple displacement here to play with to make our composition a little bit more interesting. Now let's head over to the node editor and let's make our intro. So now we have the shading tab right here open. I'm going to click new. The first thing we're going to add is a mix shader. So type in mix, mix shader right here. And let's add an emission tape, an emission shader. So plug the emission right into the bottom socket here and let's hit Z and rendered. So now we have this, it's got a little bit of glow here. It's pretty small, but we can up it just like that. I'm going to turn bloom off just for now. So it's not distracting as we make our work. So let's keep the emission here at one for now. So first thing we're going to do is add our image. So type in image in the search image texture. Now we'll click open and navigate to the image you used. So we're going to go and click my intro here and plug the color into the color. So once that happens, there you go. If we turn bloom back on, you can kind of see it glowing. You can bring up the strength just like that. So we're going to put the strength at five. We're going to put the strength at two, but now that it's plugged in the color, we can't actually color our text. So what we need to do is add a color ramp right here, change it from linear to constant. And then just bring this over here a little bit and I'm going to switch over to a nice, so a nice green. So now we have this, but now it's stuck at the size here. We, we don't know. We can't move it around. We can't do anything. So let's add a mapping node. We're going to add our mapping node, plug the vector into the vector here and add a texture coordinate right here. And we'll use the generated output here on the texture coordinate. So now we have that. So if we mess with rotation, we can do all this stuff like this. So you can actually do some pretty cool animations by itself and you can tile things. See if you want it a lot, say five, five, five. Now you have this tiled intro and you can play with animating it just like that if you want to, but that's not the animation we're going to be doing today. Okay. So as you saw, it will, it'll tile if you move it around and we don't want that, but we do want to make our logo smaller. So what we do here on our image texture is right here on repeat, just go to extend. And so now when we change it, it just changes the single image and there won't be any tiling. So I'm going to go ahead and click three on these two right here. And now we've changed the size, but now it's way down here. We need to use this location and move it back to the middle. So what I found is negative one for this particular size moves it around. But for you, you're going to have to figure out, depending on the size of the image that you imported, you're just going to have to sort of move it around by using these things. All right, so now we have this intro text. Let's go ahead and go up here to our principled shader, make it metallic. Still can't see anything going on, so I'm going to go ahead and add a point light. And just bring it up here just so we can see what's going on. And I believe I'm going to keep it here in the scene for the good amount of the time. So I'm going to switch to... A strength of 100 so now you can see some reflections this is a metallic shader so we can see the detail when we go and add our Voronoi so let's go back to the shading and let's add some fun with this gray part so let's add a Voronoi texture and plug that into and plug that into a bump node so let's go ahead and get that plug the bump into the normal and the Voronoi into the height and you'll see some fun stuff going on. Let's take these two here and hit shift D, bring them up. 
switch it to the object coordinate and plug that into the vector. So now we have this. Need to bring the scale down some. And just to play around, let's go ahead and change distance to, I believe it's Mikowski. And go from intensity to cells. And now we have these this interesting shading going on. Now let's get a color ramp right here. Plug that into the roughness so that we can have some fun with the roughness when the light hits it. And then just plug this Voronoi into the factor. And now we have some fun going on with the roughness here. And it's really cool. And we don't have to touch the color. Of course, you can touch it if you want. If you don't want it quite so bright, you can make it darker. But I like where it's at right now. All right, now let's get to how we added that weird thing. If you have Instagram and you want to go back and watch the clip some more, here it is. So we're going to go ahead and add that weird, very techy looking animation that I added when it animates in and out. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be done over here on the vector line of our image. So let's go over here, make a gap here on the texture coordinate, and let's add a Voronoi texture. Plug that in right there. We're going to change this to intent. We're going to keep this at intensity switch to Mikowski for now and you can play around with it but nothing's really happening we need to go ahead and add a mix RGB so what this is going to do it's going to combine these two things so if I just take the generator and plug it into the mix here let's take this factor and bring it all the way over here when the factors here all the way at the end it's almost as if we never added this Voronoi texture if we bring it over here it's just like when we only had the Voronoi texture there. So this is sort of a transition between the two. So now you can kind of see what we're doing. I'm going to change the exponent here to 28. Play around with that. And my scale, I'm going to bring it up to 18. So now we have this. We can play with everything that's going on in this scene. And it looks really, really wild and cool. So now I'm going to go and add my camera. So I'm going to say keep my composition right here I don't really like the displacement position so I'm gonna go make the displacement right around right around there that looks really good now I'm gonna add my camera so camera control alt 0 snaps it to view I'm gonna hit G and just position it and if you middle click and drag out you can do that so I'm gonna hit R rotate just a little bit we want to keep it kind of diagonal so now we have this, so let's go back to shading, hit zero to snap it, click on our plane. So now we can see what's happening when we change our factor. So now the animation seems pretty straightforward. I'm going to bring up my timeline here. It's right over there. Add timeline. Uh, it has, so it has 250 frames currently. I'm going to give it 100. I believe it's around the 90 that we used in the original animation. So let's right click on the factor. Insert keyframe. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to count to three right here at 42 frames. I'm going to bring the factor all the way over just like that. Right click, insert keyframe. So now, three second animation on that. Boom, now we have that. Now we just have to add those blinking lights. So I'm going to bring my timeline up some more just so I can see what's going on. So right here on frame one, let's go over here to the strength of our emission and click zero right click insert keyframe i'm going to go over here to frame maybe 11. strength of two right click insert keyframe go to here zero insert keyframe and then right about here is where it stops so we'll go back to three insert keyframe so right now it just sort of pulses now we have to go to the graph editor to go play with it some more so right up here We'll switch to the graph editor in this arrow, drag this over, click modifiers, add modifier, add noise, and then we're going to take the strength. You can see it happening here. You can bring the strength all the way up like that. And then now that we do that, it's doing that strobe effect. Now, if you're, if you're wondering on my intro, if I did this exact procedure, I didn't. That was made in After Effects, but we're kind of duplicating that and doing it in Blender here. So pretty much the same thing. You would just sort of make this black and your world color black as well, and it would pretty much look just like my intro. So let's take that, and now we've made the intro. For me, the bloom is a little bit too extreme. If it's not doing it in yours, just click bloom and bring your intensity down right about there. So now we have 
the intro. And just a just a heads up, you actually don't you're not limited to this pattern. If we go back to our shading, say if we go back and say I don't want this techie pattern. I want it to make look a little more organic. Well, I'm going to take a noise texture right here. Plug the generator the vector, the color into this one and say I'll take the detail and bring it all the way up, a little bit of distortion. And now, if we watch it, what the now it looks like that. So you can just take it and make it look a little more organic. Or if you've used After Effects and you know what Turbulent Displace is, you can bring your detail all the way down, and now it looks like a Turbulent Displace animation just like that. So there you go. You can actually add any texture you want. My favorite was that techie-looking animation. Let me show you how to export it real quick. You would click this little printer icon, click this and save it to wherever you want, change from PNG to FFmpeg on encoding, change from this to MP4, and go from medium quality to high quality. And right up here, render render your animation. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.